And if you tell us roughly how it happened, uh, Mark was on the radio, I'm sure they'll say, basically was that knee to the back of the head? Uh, yes, yeah, it was a uh, normal routine uh, game simulation, football drill, contested ball situation, uh, and just one of those unfortunate incidents where a knee struck the side of the head, was the yeah. side of the head, yeah. Uh, and what's the reason, why, why do you need surgery for that? Then... Uh, the reason he had surgery because it produced a depressed fracture in the okay. skull, yeah. uh, and the, stable, the, the fracture uh, was unstable, and it needed to be stabilised to promote healing uh, and allow full recovery. So does that mean that there's a plate inserted to help everything? Uh, and I don't want to go into the details of the surgery at this stage, uh, and bear in mind, as Ian said, we've, we've, we've compliant with the wishes of the family here, and we're, uh, we're, we're certainly happy to go along with their wishes. I think any details of the actual surgery is best comes from the neurosurgeon, rather from, from me. I wasn't actually at the surgery. I have spoken to the neurosurgeon, but he would be in a far better position to provide details so on that. Given the incident occurred in the, in the morning, yesterday morning, and then he had surgery yesterday afternoon. Yes. Um, does that give any indication of uh, the level of the seriousness of the incident? I mean, was it, it wasn't emergency surgery or anything like that? Um, it was emergency surgery as such, uh, but the timing was appropriate given uh, the clinical condition uh, and what was happening. How, sorry, how did his condition deteriorate throughout the day that he, in the afternoon, decided that he needed to go to hospital? Uh, he was actually sent to hospital immediately after the incident. He was, he was knocked unconscious at the incident. He was taken from the ground by uh, the doctors and the trainers. Uh, we assessed his, uh, his uh, situation at the time. We were concerned that he had a major head injury and we called the ambulance straight away. And I suspect that he was in the ambulance within 20 minutes of, uh, of the actual incident happening. Uh, but he was fully assessed by us before he left and he went straight to the Royal Adelaide. And was he what? conscious when he went to the he, Royal Adelaide? He was conscious when he left the, the Theberton Oval, yes. What's his condition, condition now and what's the, um, the process going forward for him for the next few days? Uh, his condition at the moment is as expected. Uh, he is breathing spontaneously by himself. Uh, he is sedated, which is normal standard procedure for this situation, but he's breathing by himself. His condition hasn't deteriorated overnight. It's remained uh, stable, and he has communicated uh, with his wife and family this morning and last night. By communicating means... He's spoken to them, yes. So mum and dad came over straight away? Uh, yes, they did. How were... Is this something you've come across before? Is it common? Is it unusual? Oh, it's very unusual. In, very unusual in football. Um, fractured skulls are uh, a well-known uh, complication of all sorts of things, particularly high-impact activities. Uh, in sport, we don't see it very often. Occasionally, in the uh, the high-speed activities like uh, downhill skiing and motor racing, obviously, but unusual uh, in in football. I haven't come across it in football before. What sort of uh, time frame for recovery are we looking at here? We're unable to say that at this stage. Bear in mind that it's less than 24 hours since his surgery. His, uh, his progress is as expected at this stage. Um, it is not unusual for him to be, for people to be monitored in intensive care as Brent will be over the next few days. That's standard management for, for, for this type of uh, injury and uh, surgery. What's the repercussion of this? It's severe vertigo, memory loss, uh, uh, have you been spoken to about any of that? Uh, far too early to, to even contemplate uh, what that might be, yes. Do you know a best case scenario for getting him back on the field uh, this season? No, look, at this stage, I mean, it's all about Brent's health. You know, really, that's that's a predominant focus. You know, I think, as Andrew sort of said, it's less than 24 hours. Um, but I'd have to say, you know, I was, I was there with Emma um, yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me, at the ground. I think our medical team handled the thing, handled the incident fantastically well. Um, you know, the care that, that Brett had on the ground and then post that, um, you know, we spoke to his mum and dad, uh, we got them over as soon as we could. Uh, so I, I think the, the support network that we put around Jamie um, and, we got, and Brent particularly, you know, with the incident that, that occurred, um, you know, I think our club should be really proud of the, the way that our medical team handled that. Have you spoken, sorry, sorry, have you spoken to play? How are the players coming? They're obviously there at the time. Are they continuing training? <coughs> 
goes on? Yeah, no, look, it's a, it's a good point. Um, you know, we got Andrew back as uh, when it was convenient and we briefed all the players and staff together collectively. Um, again, we provided as much support um, mechanisms as we could for them. Um, we had our pastor, Mark Purser, came down. Um, you know, Emma Barr, from a, a PDM perspective, Andrew, um, you know, and we have a, a sports psych at, at these times that we engage um, to provide the support network for the players. Uh, so they were certainly kept well informed and up to speed. I think in these incidents, you know, they need to be. Um, and we've, again, we've just provided the support network um, around those guys. So we'll, we'll brief the players again this morning um, and just get a gauge as to where they're at uh, and make sure that that support network continues for as long as we need to for, for both players and, and especially the family. How difficult do you think it will be for them to get back on the track and, and do the normal football things that they need to do? Yeah, well, look, I mean, it, it affects everyone differently. You know, um, trauma affects and, and has an impact on any, everyone individually. Uh, and I think what we need to do at the moment is provide that network that some people may prefer to go to different um, sectors of that support network. Uh, but it's, it's providing a, a range of support there for, for everyone to access if and when they, they feel the time's appropriate. It's not like what happened yesterday, so it's not just a small yeah, look, again, it's, it's about Brett's care. Um, you know, it's less than 24 hours. Uh, things have regressed really well so far. Um, you know, these incidents are, are never nice at the best of times. Um, so, look, it was, was, again, a matter of just providing the support network and making sure that everyone that needed to be informed at that point in time, particularly Brett's mum and dad that were interstate, um, so yeah, so look, they're, they're never, these incidents are never nice. Um, it was a matter of making sure that, that we were as diligent as what we could be with, with every um, area that we needed to, to touch base with. Andrew, you know best about these issues, but will it be safe to play again? Will it be okay to play again, um, I don't think I can answer that at this stage. It's far too early again, and I'm sorry to keep repeating that, but given it's less than 24 hours since the surgery. The, there's the initial injury, as always with any surgical intervention, there are some things that occur which is normal part of the recovery and we really have to wait until all that settles down and we see how Brent's progressing over the next week or so or even longer before we really answer that question. I know everyone's keen to know that and we are too, but it's just one of those things that we just have to take it to use a cliche day by day. So kind of as clarify, it'll be an intensive care for the next couple of days, so you're and that is our expectations, and that was the expectation of the neurosurgeon with whom we spoke uh, yesterday afternoon. And as I said, that's, that's not because of any untoward condition. That's standard management following this type of uh, injury and this type of surgery. And after intensive care, does he get put into a different area in the hospital, or does he get released? Completely? Uh, once he goes from intensive care, we expect that he'll be then transferred to a ward. Uh, for ongoing care until he's ready to be discharged. Mm. The surgery went off without a hitch, it was... Sorry? Sorry, the surgery went off without a hitch, it was just normal, easy surgery. The, when we spoke to the surgeon, his, his comment was he was very pleased with the surgery and uh, there weren't any complications at that time. And this was, that was late yesterday, immediately after the surgery. Have you spoken with Brent this morning? Has... Have you spoken with Brent? No, I haven't spoken with Brent. No, Brent, Brent is uh, sedated. Uh, which is again normal situation and at this stage we are limiting um, the people that see him and it's very important that the, that the one, those closest to him are the ones that he communicates with, yes. Do you expect that the players will get a chance to see him in coming days or maybe today? Or yeah, part of the network that we were able to put around yesterday, um, uh, Phil went in um, as soon as he was available. Uh, we had Emma in there providing support. Um, once Andrew had briefed the players, um, Andrew went back in um, and we got approval from, from Jamie um, and Brent's mum and dad for a couple of the, the leadership group to go in um, and visit him. So they were in last night and then I, I think as Andrew said from there, you know, we just need to monitor um, what's in you know, Brent's best interest at the moment from a, a rest and recuperation perspective. But yeah, look, I'm, I'm sure if we'd have, um, have let all the players would have you know, felt like they wanted to go in. So um, it's just a matter of, of managing that you know, issue at the moment um, from a recovery perspective. The one thing that I, I can say, I spoke to Caroline um, Riley this morning and 
on behalf of Jamie and, and Terry and Caroline um, and Jamie's mum and dad, they just wanted to thank you know the football community and, and friends and family for their support. They've been um, you know inundated with well wishes, um, and they you know they have been extremely grateful for the support that they've been shown from from the football community. So so look that that's that's great. We know that in in these sort of um, you know, incidents. It's great to have that support. You know, from not only your immediate um, family, but the network of, of the football community. No, it's on the, the, the left hand side of his uh, his skull. Thanks, guys. Any more questions? The, sorry, Dave. Who was the other player involved in the collision? No, well, look, <coughs> we're just providing support for all the players at this stage. We're not going to comment on uh, on individuals. It was a, it was a ground ball. Um, incident in a normal match simulation drill, um, you know, and it was, uh, I think as Jasper said before, it was a, it was a knee to the head. Thanks guys. Just, so that player's like, met, you know, in terms of... We're providing support for all the players. Just last one, just as much as you can, Andrew, can you just describe the condition, I guess, the injury in as technical terms as you are allowed or feel comfortable with? Um, I think I don't really want to um, go into it further other than uh, that it was a fracture at the side of the skull uh, and it involved more than a crack, it was just several small pieces uh, and that's why it needed to be stabilised. And I think that's, that's really all the relevant information we should be giving at this stage and again in compliance with the family's wishes.